we want to determine whether each of these events represents a binomial experiment. So in order for a binomial experiment to take place, we need to have a um, n trials, a fixed number of trials. Uh, two, we need to um, ensure, I mean these are probably not in, in any specific order, but we need to ensure that we have a constant probability of success, um, which is what we refer to as by P by the letter P. Um, each trial is independent. And number four, there are two outcomes. Every outcome is either categorized as a one, a success, or two, a failure. Now that's dictated by our experiment itself. So if we if a die is rolled twenty times and the number of sixes is counted, well, there are exactly 20 trials. The probability of success is 1 in 6. Um, there are only two outcomes. You either do get a 6 or you don't. So if you get a 6, it's a success. If you don't get a 6, that's a failure. And um, one die roll is independent of another trial. Um, so it so looks like we meet all four uh, situations, or all four assumptions. A die is rolled until 10 sixes show up. Well, that's a problem because we don't know how many trials that is. We, uh, well, you might say 10, but that's not the number of rolls. We don't know what, how many rolls it's going to require in order to see 10 sixes. So this is not a binomial experiment. In the next one, in a stream with 1,500 fish, 700 are rainbow, rainbow trout, a total of 20 fish are caught, and the number of rainbow trout is counted. Well, there are 1,500 trials. Um, sorry, sorry, uh, 20 trials since 20 fish are going to be caught. The probability of success, however, changes because if you catch one rainbow trout, you don't have 700 out of 1,500 anymore. You have 699 out of 1,499. So your probability of success is not constant. This fails. Um, you can uh, each trial is also not independent because the number of rainbow trout depends on how many have been caught and there is success or failure either you do catch rainbow trout or you don't but two assumptions are violated and that means it's not a binomial experiment it only takes one violation for that to happen about 10 percent of the u.s. population is suspected to have a form of bacteria a sample of n equals 100 people is drawn from the population and the number of people with the bacteria strain of bacteria is counted okay well there are 100 trials um, because the population is so large that looking at one person in there probably doesn't change the probability of another person um, having the bacteria very much. So we would say there's a constant probability of success. Each trial is independent, assuming we, we draw randomly. One person having the bacteria probably doesn't affect the other person having the bacteria. And since we're counting the number of people with, with this strain, a success is you you, you find a person with the strain, and a failure is you, f you don't find a person with the strain. So each of these people will be categorized as either a success or failure. We have a brand of LED light bulb, and it has a 0.5 chance of going out prior. Oh, so back here we'd say this is yes, this is no. A brand of LED light bulb has a 0.5 chance of going out prior to the advertised life of 30,000 hours. In the testing phase, 850 bulbs are sampled for, for quality assurance. The number of bulbs that don't die prior to the 30,000 hours of life is counted. So we have n equals 850. The probability of success is a constant 0.5% for each light bulb. One light bulb uh, succeeding or failing does not affect another one. So each trial is independent. And either the light bulb fails or it doesn't. Uh, it either dies or it doesn't die. So success would be that it doesn't die. A failure would be that it does die. And so all four uh, assumptions are satisfied. Therefore, this is a binomial experiment.